you, everyone knows it's controlled by Oprah myself, <laughs> and the big pharmaceutical insurance and oil companies. Or I could improve my bank account by using this captive audience to sell Amway products, or organize a Tupperware party, or hawk some of my books. And my books do make great presents uh, at holiday time. <laughs> so don't try to leave. The, the doors are locked. Uh, resistance is futile. <laughs> or I could use this opportunity to rant about low faculty salaries. Are you listening, Chancellor? Uh, low faculty workloads, uh, state mandated unpaid furloughs, uh, and students who come in with flimsy excuses for missing classes, exams, and project deadlines. Eh, I think I'll write a shocking expose book about these ideas. Maybe I'll call it Going Rogue. <laughs> University Dearest, or Fighting Phoenix Dearest, or Rogue Fighting Phoenix, or something like that. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll become a blockbuster and allow me to, and my wife, to buy a ritzy retirement condo in Hawaii. And if we do, of course, you're all invited. <laughs> I will resist these tempting subjects. Instead, I want to reflect on several related themes, much more sobering now, that have influenced my worldview, animated my scholarship, shaped my teaching at UWGB. In many, way, these, many ways, these themes have been embedded in the entire UWGB academic structure. The idea that ties these themes together is crossing borders, intellectual and geographical, and how doing so can prepare students and faculty to flourish in I will first offer remarks on crossing disciplinary borders, something many of us here at UWGB take for granted, and how doing so has enriched my own career while encouraging students and faculty here to think outside the box. I'll then talk about crossing borders between cultures and the kinds of insights and satisfactions that this can bring. UWGB students are required to take at least one course on another culture as part of their general education. It's a necessary start. But I will argue that acquiring first-hand knowledge of another culture or cultures through travel, residence, and or intensive study can be even more rewarding, as well as fostering deeper understanding of American society and the US role in the world. One of our goals, I think that most of us as faculty share, is to encourage and prepare students for informed and engaged citizenship. Finally, I will promote the globalizing the study of history. Many students here already take a course on world history as part of general education or departmental requirements. I'll present some of the insights that understanding the patterns of world history can offer as we move into the future. When I came to UWGB as a faculty member way back in the last millennium, 1975, <coughs> January, this university was considered pretty visionary. It was still developing its innovative curriculum based largely on problem-centered departments with faculty drawn from several disciplines and hence sharing insights from diverse uh, academic traditions. Over the years, we have reshaped the curriculum in most departments. Because we were not locked into a narrow disciplinary structure, UWGB has always remained a work in progress. And that's good. It fosters flexibility more flexibility than most universities enjoy. It also makes for lots of meetings and complex loyalties since most faculty belong to both disciplinary and interdisciplinary programs. When I joined what was then the concentration of modernization processing, which soon became social change and development, I did have the advantage of diverse intellectual interests. And I soon learned to appreciate the wider scope of interdisciplinarity provided to a teacher and a scholar. Borders between bodies of knowledge became less rigid, more permeable. And hence my department, Social Change and Development, currently includes historians, anthropologists, sociologists, economists, and political scientists. <coughs> and has in the past employed psychologists and literature specialists. This makes for a pretty robust exchange of knowledge and intellectual approaches. Social change and development has also been special because faculty members study both the United States and the larger world, including other societies and the international dimensions of change. All nations, including the United States, exist in a wider world of multiple but interconnected cultures, in which people, products, ideas, finance, and so on cross national borders. I was trained as a historian and certainly see myself as working broadly within that tradition. But 
I've also learned a great deal from my colleagues in other disciplines. This has shaped both my teaching and scholarship in ways that would not be possible in most other universities, where such interdisciplinary mixing is less common, discouraged sometimes, even non-existent. Hence, I learned from anthropologists the value of cultural analysis and participant observation, <coughs> from sociologists insights into social problems, social forces, and from economists, the linkages between economies and politics, as well as the urgency of fostering sustainable development. As a historian at UWGB, I could pursue topics, methodologies, and sources often ignored by conventional historians, without worrying this would somehow compromise my promotion prospects and label me as an eccentric. We were encouraged to think outside the box, push the envelope. In fact, various of my UWGB colleagues were coloring outside the lines, expanding the notion of what, for example, anthropologists or sociologists or economists might study. I was really pleased at a book I published on popular music and politics in Southeast Asia, which was an unusual topic for a historian, was used as a textbook in various universities in courses ranging from history to politics to ethnomusicology uh, to cultural studies. I even saw it for sale in various bookstores at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, in the museum bookstores. Boy, I had really made it as an interdisciplinary scholar. <laughs> Since Barack Obama spent four years in Indonesia as a child, he might, of course, enjoy the chapter on Indonesia. <laughs> Maybe Michelle will visit one of these bookstores at the Smithsonian and see the book and get it for, uh, Obama's, for Barack Obama's uh, Christmas stocking. We'll see. I'll be happy to sign it for him, a dinner in the White House. <laughs> Colleagues at other universities, some of them stuck in very traditionalist departments, often expressed admiration for the kind of disciplinary border crossing that I was encouraged to do and rewarded for doing here. This transcending narrow disciplinary approaches also enriches teaching. UWGB historians are free to integrate into their courses insights from many traditions, from music and literature to political economy and social theory, without being seen as offbeat. You know, they're allowed a lot of latitude. There has been a lively debate in recent years in the United States in higher education circles about the need for more interdisciplinary, interdisciplinarity in border crossing, spearheaded by a consortium on fostering interdisciplinary which believes that it's essential if Americans are to flourish intellectually in the 21st century to have this kind of border. Among others, Duke University has now altered their tenure policies to reward scholars who pursue an interdisciplinary approach. A variety of colleges and universities are developing interdisciplinary problem-focused programs on subjects such as war, water, energy, artificial intelligence, future studies, international development, and comparative cultures. They often face opposition, however, from a skeptical old guard committed to preserving rigidly defined disciplines. Sometimes our efforts at uh, you know, stretching the envelope a little bit failed too. Many years ago, I was involved in a uh, collaboration between SCD and NAS uh, to develop a global ecology program. It was a great idea and a really fit UWG, but somehow we just couldn't get uh, make the connections work and there were a lot of obstacles. So alas, that program was never implemented. Maybe somebody will resurrect that idea someday. <coughs> UWGB has been the academic cutting edge for 40 years since this sort of interdisciplinary mixing and problem focus is built right into our basic academic structure. This benefits our students and particularly our graduates. In the real world, outside the ivory tower, yes, there is a real world. Some of you students may find it one of these days. We faculty don't see much of it, but we're at the ivory tower. <laughs> <laughs> so might. Outside, out of out in the real world, life more often poses essay questions than multiple choice questions. And interdisciplinarity uh, is a good preparation for essay questions in life. Uh, multiple choice questions, sometimes known as mystical choice questions. <laughs> People need to be flexible, flexible adaptive and multidimensional to flourish in the new millennium. As some elements of academia seem to finally be catching up to us, this is a tradition that I hope UWGB will nourish 